A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. Refining a bit of the logic and adding upon the logic for the positioning of the cards. Uh, so starting off, we'll go to our widget for the card. And inside of here, we uh, previously had this interpolation uh, based on the repositioning that we were given. And the repositioning we were given was from the card hand. The card hand uh, calculates the card position over here. And it does so in these different functions that we've created or methods. Um, we're going to be starting off with the card angle one today. So uh, as we fan out the cards in our hand, uh, the further the, the cards are from the center, the more of an angle we want to give them. So uh, starting off, we want to create a new variable called card angle. Uh, this card angle will be of a float type and will represent uh, the amount of degrees that we uh, rotate the cards uh, as they get further away from the center. Uh, starting off, we can put something like 10 uh, so that we actually see some of the, the effect of it as we debug it later on. Uh, for now, we go into the get card angle and start working on the logic here. So, um, our, our card angle, we, we want to, as I said earlier, I, we want to determine how far we are from the center of the cards, essentially. So, uh, to do that, and since we're going to be doing it multiple times over other functions, we will be creating a function for that. So we can call this uh, get uh, card index uh, position from center. I think that's descriptive enough. We will make it a pure function. Uh, we'll make it so that it has an input that's an integer. It will be a card index. We will be having an output that is a float. Uh, which we call card index position. We could have this as an integer as well, I guess. Uh, we'll keep it as a float for now uh, and see if we change it later. So based on a card index in our hand, we need to determine how far is it from the center. To do that, we need to know uh, how far is, um, or, or first of all, we need to know how many cards we have in hand, right? Because we, if we have uh, three cards in hand, the zeroth index is going to be one to the left from center, um, for example. And we don't know that unless we know how many cards we have in hand. So we'll create another function that gets uh, that information for us. So uh, get cards in hand. Now, <clears throat> get cards in hand. Uh, we'll make that pure as well. Uh, we don't need to have any inputs to because what essentially we're going to do is we're going to take the array of uh, widgets that we have and we're going to get the length. And from the length, we're just going to be sending that value back as our return value because that is the amount of cards that we have. If you are not aware, uh, get the number of items in an array. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. Uh, we'll say that this value is the number of cards in hand. There we go. Okay, so going back again, we can now call our get cards in hand and we can establish from that how many cards we have. Now, this formula that I have here to determine this value here is maybe not the cleanest, maybe you have a better one, uh, but this at least works and I'll try to walk you through why we're doing the things that we're doing. So um, what we want to do is we want to have the cards in hand and we want to subtract from them one. Uh, the reason for this is if, bring up a notepad, we go. Um, if we have 
three cards in hand, for example. Three cards. We want a zero index and one index and two index. We want this one to represent a minus one value, this one to be a zero value, and this one to be a one value. <clears throat> so in this instance, we would just calculate what is the, the middle, the index middle, and then uh, subtract it with our, or, or, or take the, the, the index that we have. Okay. <laughs> so if we have the zeroth index, we want to take zero minus one uh, to get a result which is minus one. Uh, in the case of the second index over here, we want to have two minus one, which is the middle index, which gives us the result of one. In the case of this one, we essentially want to have one minus one, which result in zero. That all makes sense and works fine as long as you have an uneven amount of cards in hand. However, if you have an even amount of cards in hand, like for example, you have zero and one, let's see, we still want this one to result in minus one and this one to result in plus one. So how we do this is what's in the middle between these is gonna be 0 0.5, right? So we're gonna behaving a little bit differently depending on what value that we have, if it's a positive or a negative value. So um, to explain this, we, we will first take this, this uh, subtracted value because we're aiming to get the middle index and we'll turn this into a float. Uh, the reason we want to turn it into a float is because we want to have the possibility of getting a partial value. Uh, we'll divide it by two, which should be half of the cards that we have, which should end us in the middle. Then we want to take <clears throat> our card index, like I showed in the notepad, and we want to, well, first of all, we want to make this a float first, and then we'll subtract it with the middle index that we have calculated here. However, if this is a, a leftmost, meaning a this, this will become a negative value if we're on the left-hand side and a positive value if we're on the right-hand side. So we want to make a comparison here to check, are we on the left or the right-hand side? So we'll check against zero and see, okay, if this is true, this is uh, the left hand side. In that case, what we want to do is we want to take the value that we have here and subtract it with 0 0.5. Okay, let's see if I can clean this up a little bit, like so. And after that, we want to, well, we want to round it. Uh, so um, we'll type out round, which will round it upwards. Um, and then we want to set this variable as a local variable. We'll call this our uh, local index position. Okay, so if true, we're gonna go here and get that value. <clears throat> And well, actually this one shouldn't be a float. This one should be an integer. Um, and we'll hook up the local index position here. So now we have calculated, in the case we go for the true position here, we should have that value calculated properly here. If we go the other way around, then this is a positive value. Then we don't want to do the uh, subtracting. We just want to do a round immediately. And then we'll set that to be the local index position. <clears throat> like so, and this should be returning to us the, the card index position uh, from center. Um, let's see, can we display this in some good way? Um, we'll call the get card index position here first to begin with. I'll, I'll see if I can think of a good way for us to uh, 
show this off. Uh, but for now, we'll just uh, get the card index here. <clears throat> well, that's not what I wanted to do. And then we'll hook it up like so. So now we have determined the card index from position, hopefully, theoretically. And we want to multiply this value with the value that we have as our card angle to determine what is the angle of the card going to be. So in the case of it being a 2 to the left, we'll take minus 2 multiplied by angle, which will be 10, so minus 20 total. The card to the right of that will be minus 10. The card in the middle, if we have 5 cards, will be 0. And the, the fourth card, so the first one to the right, will be 10, and so on and so forth. That's the idea, at least. We can try this out and see what it looks like and then see if we can or if we even need to do some debugging to test it out. But uh, we had a card. You can see, OK, that maybe wasn't the the cleanest display of it, but <clears throat> we had one card. So one card, that means that it's going to have zero angle in uh, rotation. We had another card. That means that the middle is not actually a card. So this one should be counted as minus one and this one as plus one. So they get minus 10 and plus 10 in uh, degrees of rotation. We have the third card, meaning the middle card now turns to be zero in angle, and this one still stays at minus one or minus 10 degrees, and this one plus 10 degrees, and so on and so forth. So that works, uh, and hopefully that was understandable enough to follow along with. Again, uh, if you feel that this is not a great formula and you have something better, you can always just replace it in this function, and everything should be fine and modular enough that it doesn't affect anything else, essentially. Uh, so now we have the, the card angle. Very nice. Uh, let's start working at our X position. So our X position um, might be something that we, uh, first of all, we don't want to have this, of course, but um, we may want to have something like our the center of our card hand widget to affect the position. So we want to have our uh, card widgets or card hand centered inside of the widget. Uh, to do that, we need to have a center position. So we need to figure that out. So we'll create a function for it. We'll call get uh, center position. And this is going to be for the widget, of course, then. So inside of get center position, and we can make this uh, pure as well, uh, we want to, first of all, we want to return a we want to return a what do we want to return we want to have an x and a y because that's what it's gonna be let's uh, make it a vector 2d that should be good enough and we can just drag it out no we'll do it like this we'll first of all we'll get a reference to self which is this widget so the card hand uh, we'll get the cached geometry, just like we did before for the card. From there, uh, we can get the local size. And now we have the X and Y size for this. So if we want to have the center, it would be divided by zero, right? So along both axes, both X and Y divided by two will give us the, the center point in X and Y for this widget. So that gives us that. So going back now, we have our get center position. So we can get that here. We might want to rename this to something like actually center position. Okay. Um, so we have the center position. How, how can we make use of this? Well, uh, if we can determine our offset for our card, and since we were just working with the X position now, we can first of all break this uh, vector. Whoa, not what I want to do. I'm not sure what my mouse is doing now. Oh, this. We're just interested in the X here, really. Um, so in the situation here where we have a sort of rudimentary offset, which is hard coded right now, we could just be using that to uh, add and hook this up and hook that up like so, and it should theoretically be adding uh, from, the, from the center position uh, 100 times the index. So it's gonna be a little bit more towards the, the right. It will build from the center towards the right instead of actually building 
uh, equal in both directions. But you can see that that works. So it's it's starting from the center of the widget and then filling up to the right. Um, but we want to take into consideration like we did earlier with our card index position so that we can actually have our center position as sort of a middle point but be able to build or add cards to the left of it as an offset as well which we get as uh, this result from this because we go from minus one to zero to plus one if we calculate our our indexes so we get a uh, card index here and we send it that's not what i wanted to have i want to get card index yeah there we go the variable that we have as the in parameter here so this uh, we want to make use of together with this vector so we want to multiply this value instead with uh, something so let's introduce a new variable for that let's create one we can make it a float we can call it uh, card spacing now card spacing we get here also let's make sure that we have some default value for it so let's say we have 100 to replace this 100 that we have up here and we want to multiply this value with the card spacing. And after we have done that, we want to add, uh, we can remove this now so it becomes cleaner. Uh, we want to add our local offset to our center position to get our final position. So let's see if we get it more. No, we can't do that because it wants to have a, can't convert float to double precision. All right, this makes sense. Uh, let's see here, integer multiply by, that should be fine, right? And then we just go, no, that should be a float value. So if we take this, uh, let's see. Am I thinking wrong here? We multiply this by this. We want to add to this. We want to add that value and this value. That worked fine. What did I do wrong last time? Anyway, okay. So, so now the idea is that it should be giving us an offset to the left. So let's test it out. So you can see it goes into the center and it offsets to left and to the right. However, we are getting a issue when it comes to the rotation seems to be off now for some reason. Did I use the wrong? This is just that. Let's double check. It's fine, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Rotations are fine. It's the position that's a little bit off, it looks like. All right. Right, because if we don't, if we have an even amount of cards, we don't actually have a zero at index, and that means we get a sort of big gap in between them. Okay. Um, let's do this um instead we'll do we take the card index this would be a little bit messy now before it gets prettier i think but if we get the card index and we instead turn it into float so that we can uh, subtract from a uh, our cards in hand which we divide we need to make it a float first i guess so we make it a float and then we divide by two, right? Then we can have partial values as in a half and stuff like that, which is what we need for our, when we have an even amount of cards. Then we multiply this by the card spacing. And then and that is multiplied, we add it to our center position. So this will be our actual X offset now based on the index. So let's try that. Uh, 
Okay, that looks better, I think. Um, yeah, good. So, so we'll use that instead. We'll just remove this. Like so. All right, so now we have an X position. We have a, uh, let's see here. Let's uh, do, 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 uh, calculate here. We have the X position, we have a card angle. Uh, we could work on a Y position as well now. We're starting to get some positions here that are handled uh, from our calculations, which is nice. Um, so when it comes to our Y position, um, we don't really need a whole lot of it. We, we tend to want, if we have a fan card hand, we want the cards that are furthest to our corners to go lower than the ones that are in the middle. So uh, the further it comes from the center, the lower it wants to get. And that means we again get to make use of our get card position from center. So we can get card index. So this means that we will get values like minus one, plus one, if there's two cards. But if we were to, we can actually display that, I guess. Let's, um, let's add a variable first here for this variable. So uh, for, for this, uh, this height, we can call it, I don't know, arc height, maybe, I have no idea. Um, let's give it a, some value to begin with, maybe 10 is a good value, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and if we were to just multiply this now with arc height and send it out as our Y position, what we would get is a staircase kind of effect. Okay, this is gonna be difficult with the angles. So if we do Let's set our angle to zero for now. That's not what we want. There we go. Just for demonstration purposes. And then we add some cards to our hand. We can see that we get a sort of um, uh, staircase kind of situation here. And the reason for that is because the left hand card now has uh, a negative value that we're multiplying with the the offset and the negative y offset means that it's going higher up so what we really want to do is we want to uh, we want to get an absolute value of this so it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative we want to have an absolute value which will bring it downwards regardless of if it's the left or the right hand side. So now you can see that we get sort of a, a uh, bow or a, um, arc kind of a situation going on there, um, which is good. We can now add back our card angle and it should, where is the card angle, there is, it is, and then, no, I want 10 degrees and hopefully this should look now fairly okay, I think. The degrees are very apparent because it's such a large amount of degrees. Uh, so get something slightly less here, it would make it look uh, more natural and nice. We will be adding more functionality to, to this aspect as well later on as well. Uh, but yeah, so now you... sort of get that. I think that might be a good place to stop for now. To recap a little bit what we have done this time, uh, we have been working on our displacements for our card uh, where we are deciding to calculate the card position. We have in the X position now a calculation that gives us an offset uh, in relation to a center position. We have our Y position, which is a offset based on the arc of the fanned cards in the hand. 
and of course we have the, the card angles uh, as well. So all of these together create our final transformation of the cards so far at least. We will be adding a little bit more to this um, with some complexity in the following episodes of course, but for now that's going to be all. Keep on learning, take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.